that's we're going to pull up something that I think some of you will find of interest because I think it is kind of necessary that I explain to y'all who I am. Okay? As a servant of Jehovah, and I don't know why. Let's see. Did I spell behind with two eyes? That's because I was tired. Ladies and gentlemen, I put in the spirit behind toasting. Now, there are a lot of rumors, there are a lot of suggestions of where it comes from. But I'm going to prove to you that the spirit behind toasting was associated with offering uh, drink offerings to gods. As a matter of fact, part of the rituals, and we can use the term ritual, there's nothing wrong with that. It's part of the ritual of the festivals and the sacrifices of the Jews was that of drink offerings and gift offerings and voluntary offerings okay so they offered a gift they offered a drink offering however the other nations around them did a little bit more they would toast to their gods now sometimes blood no I'm sorry a lot of times blood remember the life is in the blood and so they would do that so I'm gonna show you something those of you who are interested if you ain't interested go on now uh, because like I said I want to show you who I am and this is gonna do it for you Deuteronomy we're gonna Deuteronomy it means second law Leviticus meaning first law Deuteronomy we're gonna go to the 18th chapter Okay, here in Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter, is it, I think I might be wrong. I don't know if I'm right. I know usually I'm right. Pay attention, y'all. There should be found in, not found in you, anyone who makes his sons or daughters pass through the fire. Now, some of you guys may not know that a lot of the nations used to take their children, you know, those lovable ones that you love so much, and they would offer them up. And sacrifice to their fake gods in the fire make them pass through the fire literally burn their children alive you heard about people burning people to volcanoes that's where the tradition came from or anyone who employs divination calling up people from the dead or magic and all that stupid stuff see anyone practicing magic or anyone who looks for omens and sorcerers anyone binding others with spells anyone who consults a spirit medium or a fortune teller or anyone who inquires of the dead for whoever does these things are detestable to jehovah and on account of these detestable practices jehovah your god is driving them away from before you you should prove yourself blameless before your god see all of these were practices and worship to other gods he does not allow that that's why they took over the land when you have entered into the promised land the land into which Jehovah your God is giving you you must not learn to imitate their detestable practices ladies and gentlemen he hates false worship it says for these nations that you are dispossessing used to listen used to listen to those practicing practicing magic and divination but Jehovah your God has not allowed you to do anything like this my God doesn't allow me to do that ladies and gentlemen so I don't I wouldn't do it even if you asked me to that's why I said I don't watch spiritistic movies it's got spiritism in it don't watch it got magic in it don't watch it low-key man low-key please now uh, they got superpowers it depends on the level of their superpowers and where their so-called powers come from. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe in superpowers. Why? There was this man. His name was Jesus. And you know what he did? He walked on water, raised people from the dead, cured people, healed people. But he did all of that with the Bible's explains God's Holy Spirit. The people who are doing it today are doing it with a spirit, but it doesn't belong to God. Now, I, 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 we're not finished. I said I'm going to prove to you that the toasting of the glasses, toasting, i got to give you guys a story before we go into it, okay? The clinking of the glasses. Look, the original toasting and history of clinking glasses and cheers 
one of the 600 blah 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 okay we got to talk I had a friend his name was because we're not friends anymore his name was Larry I haven't spoken to Larry since 2004 maybe yeah right around 2004 when I was getting ready to leave California and Larry was a basketball player uh, right about 2004 2005 he retired he played overseas he was in a Pan American game they won the championship that's just before the United States got their own team and did professional you know allow professional <laughs> players to join the <laughs> the amateur Olympics <laughs> Sorry, I thought that was hilarious. Anyway, I go over to Larry's house, and this, his mother was alive then. Mother, a lovely woman. I had a lot of respect for my dear sister. Um, she had cancer, and she died of cancer. The whole time she had cancer, I didn't even know. I thought her hair was just short because, you know, she decided to wear her hair short. I, I never seen her with long, long, long hair, but it turns out that she had cancer and she died I didn't even find out about the funeral uh, which I understand why they we were we were family I go to the house one day she's still alive and they invited me to dinner and I go and I eat dinner with the family and they we're talking and they they have wine I'm not a wine drinker and they know that <laughs> I don't drink wine I don't like alcohol and so I have my drink and then they give a toast and I tell them I can't toast and they ask me why I said because it comes from an ancient ritual where individuals would toast to ward off evil spirits so that's why in this search pay attention ladies and gentlemen I said the spirit behind toasting so watch what I put now to prove to you that people believe that sounds can ward off evil spirits Does anybody know why people have wind chimes? Oh, my grandmother used to have those things. <clears throat> I didn't write this. Wind chimes were and still are used to scare away evil spirits. They're hung in doorways and windows to dissuade bad luck from entering into the home. The warning aspect of wind chimes is translated into modern culture through movies. A common film, Muppets, is the ringing of wind chimes to signal imminent danger. Ladies and gentlemen, wind chimes. As a kid, I liked the sound of wind chimes. Everybody and their grandmama liked the sound of wind chimes. They sound really nice. The God that I serve says, don't do it. So the clinging of glasses and toasting, I don't do that. Because my God says, no, this is my God. I serve this God. I remember I was in the fifth grade, and there's a, let, let, me, let me let you guys, I, I'm not talking about the young lady, because the young lady was a nice young lady. She never disrespected me. She treated, her name is Miss Heal now. She's a woman. Her name is Miss Heal. Uh, C-B, uh-oh, B-S, C-B-S, J-I-M-H-I-L-L. -L. He is a sportscaster. His name is Jim Hill. The schools I went to, a lot of actors and stars and millionaires and all of that that's where their children were in the area where their children were it was Brentwood Westwood Santa Monica well not really Santa Monica but Brentwood and Westwood Jim Hill Los Angeles there he is that's Mr. Jim Hill he my uncle and he favor each other a whole lot in my opinion but this was his sister his sister and I went to the same school and I remember making a comment I said I serve my God. She said, we all have the same God. And I told her in no uncertain words, no, you don't. My God's name is Jehovah. I serve Jehovah. What I'm trying to get everybody to, to understand 
is I didn't start serving Jehovah last week and I don't serve Jehovah because somebody made me or talked me into it or brainwashed me. That, that, oh, I love that one. That somebody could brainwash me out of all of the people on this planet. That there are some idiots out there who think that I can be dissuaded or convinced of anything. That I would take anything that anybody else said and I would believe it because they said it. I, for the life of me, I don't get that. You guys listen to the videos. You see how I don't allow what somebody else says to be the guiding post of what I do. I show you where I'm getting my information. I even told you, if you want to know about me, this is the root of who I am. This is what my God says, don't do. These are the major things. He hates spiritism. The first thing you need to pay attention to is those Ten Commandments. Now, I'm not saying we're under the Ten Commandments. We're under the principle of the Ten Commandments, but we're not under the Ten Commandments because they were nailed to the torture stake with the Christ. However, those laws were put there for a reason. The very first five was with reference to false gods. Go back and look. You must have no other god against my face, is what he says. He can't stand false gods. So... We have all of these people who say they're serving him, but they practice. Hold on. Let me show you. Spiritism. Divination. Omens. They practice magic. They may not make their sons and daughters pass through the literal fire, but the figurative fire. Because why? They teach them the same traditions. They teach them the same traditions. Look, I'm going to show you one more thing, and that's it. We're going to go to Exodus, because I need you to see those commandments that he has. Exodus and... You see, with my memory these days, and I still remember... I remember! I may not get everything 100% right, but this is what he says. I am Jehovah your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You must not have any other gods besides me. I have never served any other God, ever. I have served this God, the one who brought the Israelites out of Egypt. You must not make for yourselves a carved image. I have never bowed down to an image. I have never worshipped an image. I don't wear a cross, never would have. I don't bow down to a statue and pray to it. And if that's what you do, you knock yourself out. He says no, but you go ahead and you do what you do because you are better than my God. See, my God is the one who doesn't allow that. Your God allows you to do that, so you keep doing what your God allows you to do. My God says this. You must not make for a carved, yourself a carved image or a form like anything that is in the heavens, above or upon the earth, below or in the waters underneath the earth you know the who was it the Assyrians <laughs> and the Philistines had fish gods gods that had the form of a fish why in the world would anybody want to worship a fish people worship everything there is this one religion on this planet that has 480 million gods I'm not going to say that religion's name out loud because I'm not here to talk about religion. I don't talk about religion. I could care less about religion. What I can tell you for a fact is it's impossible for you to worship 480 million gods. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, they worship everything because everything is living and is a god to them. So they worship everything. That's why 480 million is where they stopped. It's a rounded off number that was just invented, created, put together. Knocked themselves out. There are other people who serve a triune God, a three-in-one God. Not a talk, not a teaching of the Bible, but they claim it is. And they'll show you one or two or three scriptures, and then they'll show you two other scriptures that only talks about two of them, and then they'll say, well, see, there it is, and the other one's not mentioned because blah, blah, blah. And they'll make up all of these excuses, but they don't show a single scripture in the Bible which explains how this is possible. We know how Jesus was born. We know that Jesus died. As I told you, my God cannot die. My God is energy with intelligence. You don't believe me? Go back and look at the book of Isaiah, the 20th chapter. It says he's dynamic 
and energy and abundant and power. My God cannot die. That's why I serve my God, because he's always going to be around. So I can always depend on him. I can always call to him for aid, for help. He's my God. Not This is not a religious conversation. I just want you to understand who I am. Because a lot of people think they know me. Well, you always make those little comments where you almost go cussing, you don't cussing. So how is that you serving God? First of all, if that's all that I do, thank you. Oh, Lord, thank you. You have no idea how much you do, and then you want to compare me to you. Stop it, please. Don't judge me because of your standards. Judge me because of his. So if you can find some place where he tells me that I can't do that, I will stop immediately. I know, I know, I know you're going to tell me about some general principle, some idea that you've created, but I want you to hear it again so that you understand. It is not prohibited by him. Yeah, it may not be the nicest thing, but that's been what I have done for more than 40 years. Because I don't curse. I go. I don't sound right cursing to begin with. That I sound horrible with that junk, so that's a good thing. But I don't do it because he says no. He talks about public cursing. He says no. So I don't do the public cursing. Notice what number five says. It says, you must not bow down to them, nor be enticed to serve them. So... Ladies and gentlemen, the first five verses is about serving other gods and him being the only true God. That's all it was about. That's the whole thing about ten plagues against Egypt was about, wait, you didn't know? You didn't know? Oh, okay, I'm going to show you two more things. Number six, number five, sorry. You must not bow down to them or be induced to serve them for I, Jehovah, and your God, who requires exclusive devotion. Bringing punishment upon the errors of the father, upon the sons, and upon the third generation, upon the fourth generation of those who hate me. You see, when you worship other gods and do all of that, you're showing that you hate my God. That's why I don't have any friends who are not Jehovah's Witnesses. Because Jehovah's Witnesses, even by the uh, attaching themselves to that identity, shows that they respect him, that they love him. You see, that they are loyal to him. See, but showing loyal love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. That's Jehovah's Witnesses. I know, I know, I know, I know. You think that other religions out there are doing the same thing. And that's fine. They can do that. But these are my people. Now, these are not my people with videos. Because, see, I don't do these videos for Jehovah's Witnesses. You all have heard me say that. My videos are not for Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses know who they're armed, their strength, their shield, their crag, their rock. They know who that is, so I don't do this for them. They know where they need to go to get assistance. They don't come to me. They go to him. That's their job. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, he says he brings punishment upon the errors of fathers, upon sons, upon the third generation, fourth generation. Now, I thought that a father could not be held accountable for the errors of the son, and the son could not be held accountable for the errors of the father. But he says he brings punishment for the errors of fathers upon sons. But how, that's a contradiction. How can he contradict? I thought the Bible doesn't contradict itself. Oh, hold on. It's not a contradiction. He's talking in context. He's talking about these individuals who don't listen to him. See, when, like I said, the people who are making their sons and daughters pass through the fire figuratively, sacrificing their children to gods figuratively, well, when the father practices sin, practices something he says don't do, such as worshiping other gods or bowing down to images, well, they teach this to their sons, and then their sons teach it to their sons to the fourth and fifth generation, showing that they, as a generational family, hate Jehovah. So he brings punishment upon them because they bring this as a tradition throughout the generations. He says no. People say, well, why does he do this? And why does he... This is not that conversation. Now, I told you I was going to show you one last thing, and it's in Exodus. We're going to go to the ninth chapter. You need to know this because you all know about let my people go. So Jehovah said to Moses, go on and say to Pharaoh, this is what Jehovah has said, the God of the Hebrews. Send my people away so that they may serve me. So let you guys know whom we're talking about. Moses used God's name. The original Bible put God's name in this section. Pharaoh did not, well, he knew of the name, but he didn't know who Jehovah was. So let me show you who Jehovah is. Because y'all need to know because that's, he's going to tell you. 
Pay attention. It says, for now I am directing all of my blows to strike your heart, your servants and your people, so that you may know that there is no one like me in all the earth. For by now I could have thrust out my hand and, or excuse me, thrust out my hand, or thrust my hand out to strike you. You and your people with a devastating plague. And you would have been wiped out of the earth. But for this reason, I have kept you in existence to show you my power and to have my name declared in all the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all the whole ten plagues were. They worship cats, kyles, gnats. They worship fish, water. All of the plagues, they even worshiped their own children. Pharaoh believed he himself was the son of a god. Thus his son was the son of a god, and they were gods and to be worshipped. That's why Pharaoh celebrated his birthday. Why wouldn't he celebrate the birthday of a god? Yeah, that's where birthday celebrations come from. Worshipping of oneself. <laughs> you didn't know? Come on now. Birthdays are the most selfish day of the year that people could celebrate. It's a worship of oneself. It's somebody is celebrating their birthday. Don't our God teach us how to love others? But he says you're supposed to love others as yourself. Yes, but he doesn't say that you're supposed to worship yourself. You guys don't get it, and I know you don't. But I wanted you to understand this is me. This is my life. That's why my life is so unique. Okay, I may not be like every other Jehovah's Witness you ever met, but the fact is, this is how my life is governed. This is the God I serve. This is the God I have conversations with on a regular basis. As a matter of fact, when I finish this video, my best friend, my God, is my best friend. My brother, his son, Christ Jesus, is my other best friend. We, I call him my brother. We, we have that relationship. We, he and I, and my father are about to go have a conversation. I'm gonna leave y'all. Now, most people might be embarrassed to have a conversation like this with people. Ladies and gentlemen, that's fine. I just want you to know there's an art behind my madness. When I tell you that coming up with, where is it? I think, no, it's not open anymore. I was gonna show you guys that document that I said I'm not gonna give you guys any more hints about, but all you gotta do is go look at the the genius behind the two complaints, the one against the judges and the one against the banks. Go and look at the genius behind the two. Go and look at how they already have their complaint forms for these very same things, but neither one of them are criminal complaints. Then I want you guys to do this. We're gonna we're gonna go here just shortly. We're gonna go to and I want you to pay attention. We are going to do the criminal complaint thing. But what we want to do is we're going to put you guys on pause for a second while I find this. And then we'll come right back. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to look up a federal rule of civil procedure. Oh, I'm sorry, FRD. Bard! Bard! Oh, Lord! Okay. United States District Court showed it right there, right at the bottom. I should have just went down there and clicked on it, but no. I want you to pay attention. This is GPO, General Printing Office. I didn't want that. For I don't even know what General Printing Office, what that was saying. Okay. I have no clue as to what that was saying. Uh-oh. I put the period in the wrong spot, y'all. Let's get rid of that. And let's put it there. All right. So, Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, ladies and gentlemen. Number three. Commencing an action. Do you see that? See, you can't commence an action in court or a criminal proceeding. You cannot commence a criminal proceeding 
But what you can do, because it's the court who commences the action, and they've allowed the attorneys to come in and commence the action. If you guys only understood, attorneys can go and file criminal complaints in courts. They, it is frowned upon. They don't allow them because they get in a lot of trouble when they do because the court don't want them doing that, which is why they don't do that. Okay. Uh, give me one second, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Here's the problem. I told people that I don't have time to be talking to them about this last minute stuff. There is a attorney who wants to talk with me because I handled an arbitration. Ladies and gentlemen, once the arbitration is over, the arbitration is over. They want affidavits and all of that. I don't mind coming and testifying. I don't have a problem testifying as to an arbitration that I oversee. Go ahead. Ask me a question on the stand. Because I'm not going to play that junk. Okay? You're not going to sit up there and attack me like you do other people. Oh, I said... Oh, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize. I was distracted. I received an email from somebody... And let's see, we're going to do, I, I messed up. That was civil procedure. That's commencing an action in civil court. I put civil. I wasn't supposed to put civil. I was supposed to put criminal. And I don't know why I put 03. I know better that it ain't no 03. Okay? But it's the rules of criminal procedure. So this means that this is a criminal complaint. You don't have to call it a criminal complaint, but when you do it under the federal rules of criminal procedures, it becomes a criminal complaint. So let's find out who gets to bring forth charges against another in a criminal proceeding. So, a complaint is a written statement of essential facts constituting the offense charge, except as provided in Rule 4.1. It must be made under oath before a magistrate, judge, or, if none is reasonably available, then before a state or local judicial official. Just that simple. You can bring your complaint before a state judge if it is necessary. Just that simple. Okay? It just really is that simple. Now, a lot of people are thinking it's complicated. I promise you it is not complicated. The language of Rule 3 is amended as part of the general restyling of the criminal rules to make it more easily understood and to make the style and terminology consistent throughout the rules. These changes are intended to be stylistic and not substantive changes. Uh, excuse me, and no substantive changes is intended except as described below. Now, they did amend it because it didn't always say what it's saying here. The amendment makes one change in practice. Currently, Rule 3 requires a complaint to be sworn before a magistrate judge, which, under the current Rule 54, could include a state or local judicial official, because they are part of the federal system, ladies and gentlemen. Shh! Shh! Don't tell nobody. Revised Rule 1, because Rule 1 has been changed, no longer includes state and local officials, in the definition of magistrate judges for the purpose of these rules. Instead, the definition includes only United States magistrate judges. Rule 3 requires that a complaint be made before a United States magistrate judge or before a state and local officer. 
The revised rule does, however, make a change to reflect prevailing practice and overcome the desires of the committee that the procedure take place before a federal judicial officer if one is reasonably available. As noted, Rule 1, where the rules, such as Rule 3, authorize a magistrate judge to act, any other federal judge may act. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Rule 3 says that if a magistrate judge is not available and if none is reasonably available including another federal judge you can go before a state and local judicial officer now as they just told you a state and local judicial officer doesn't matter if they change the rule under rule 54 the state and local judicial officer were also federal judges that's why they're called the united states judges i didn't make that up not my rule now, I wanted to check one out just so that you guys know that I'm not just making those complaints for you just to be making something, to have something saying different. Look, I created a template. <laughs> Look at my template. My template is better than his template. I did that for you because I went before my God and asked him for his assistance to help you. I kid you not. I, that's why I say it was genius wasn't my genius I'm, I'm smart but I ain't that smart complaint warrant summons by telephone or reliable electronic means a magistrate may consider information communicated by telephone or other reliable means when reviewing a complaint and deciding whether to issue a warrant or summons ladies and gentlemen when a magistrate hears a complaint then that is called a probable cause hearing doesn't matter if these rules say he gets to do it these this is not the law these are rules. Rules don't make law. Okay? Rules do not make law. But you have every right. Every court has a motions hearing day. Every court has an ex parte motions hearing day. If you are really serious, about bringing forth your complaint to the court. You do it ex parte. Just that simple. The clerk of the court will not let you file a criminal complaint. They will do everything in their power to prevent it from happening. We have been attempting to do this since... Well, I've been attempting to do it since 1998. It wasn't until now that I have the... <sighs> recognition of knowledge to be able to do it and to say that yes I believe that we will be successful so I don't do anything without his help why because he's my God if I truly trust him then I'm gonna follow his direction yeah I made my mistakes and he knows it he knows that if I had to do it all over again I'd probably make the exact same mistakes why because I can't change the outcome look some people will disagree with this but I'm gonna show this to you and you take it for what it is take it for what it's worth I'm not gonna make you understand it there are two scriptures uh, one of them is Isaiah the 45th chapter yes I said Isaiah and I didn't say Isaiah Isaiah the 45th chapter roughly I think it starts about verse number 9 the other one is Romans the ninth chapter Romans the ninth chapter says something quite interesting showed it to you guys before you may uh, roughly the ninth chapter roughly right about 9 but we're gonna start with number 8 that is, the children of the flesh are not really children of God, but the children of, uh, excuse me, by the promise are counted as offspring. For the word of the promise was as follows. At this time, I shall come to Sarah, and Sarah shall have a son. Not Hagar, Sarah. Not only then, but also Rebecca, when conceived, about to have two children, when Rebecca conceived twins from one man, Isaac, our forefather, 
for when they had not yet been born and had not yet practiced anything good or bad, so that God's purpose respecting the choosing might continue dependent not on works, but on the one who calls. It is said of her, the older shall be the slave of the younger. Just as it is written, I love Jacob, but I hated Esau. But Esau I hated. Ladies and gentlemen, there was nothing Esau could have done because it was written in the genes, his genome. They had already described what he would be. I have often had conversations with my God, why does he allow? Because pay attention. What are we to say then? Is there injustice with God? <laughs> Certainly not. For he says to Moses, I shall show mercy upon whomever I show mercy, and I will show compassion upon whomever I show compassion. So then it doesn't depend upon you, on the one person's desires or his efforts, but upon God who has mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, do you remember this? For this reason I have let you remain to show you my power in connection with you and to have my name declared in all the earth. So then he has mercy upon whomever he wishes, and he lets whomever he wishes become obstinate. I am grateful that my God has not permitted me to become obstinate. Because I certainly could have. I certainly could have been like a lot of people. But that's not the case. Final. You will dare say to me, Why does he still find fault? For who can withstand his will? <laughs> but who are you, old man, to be answering back to God? I've asked him the same question, but just as with Abraham, him being allowed to ask God question upon question upon question upon question, <laughs> and he allowed it. I remember telling people about my mother when I was growing up, my brothers and sisters, well, how come he gets to talk to you like that? It wasn't that I was being disrespectful. What was happening is I, I, I lacked a whole lot of tact when I was younger. I did not have tact. If I saw something wrong, I just called it. If you did something wrong, I called you a liar. I did not mince my words. I don't do so much of that anymore. But I, if you lied, I called you a liar. I don't care if you were 85 years old, you were called a liar. Now, the scriptures tell us that we shouldn't do that. But then at that time, my personality was logical. No, if he lied, he lied. I'm not going to sit up here and, you know cover his back and, you know, blah, 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 blah. If he lied, he lied. Okay. So, take it this way. Does the thing molded say to its molder, why did you make me this way? Now, I promise you this should say Isaiah. Isaiah 45, exactly what I said. Okay, and I said verse 9. Because these two... The Bible harmonizes, it agrees with itself, doesn't disagree with itself. What? Does not the potter have authority over the clay to make from the same lump one vessel for an honorable purpose and another for a dishonorable one? So what if God had the will to demonstrate his wrath and to make his power known that he tolerated with much patience Vessels of wrath made fit for destruction those people who don't serve him. Sorry, if you didn't understand this, let me read it to you again. What? <laughs> Does not the potter have the authority over the clay to make from the same lump one vessel for an honorable purpose and another for a dishonorable purpose or a dishonorable use? Ladies and gentlemen, people are allowed to make choices. It's not free will. They just have free choice. They don't get to do what they want, because if it was free will, you get to do what you want, and there's no consequence. No, no, you have the right to choose, just like Moses said to the Israelites. I put before you today the maledictions and the blessings. So people can choose not to serve God, and a lot of people do. Don't worry about it, it's okay, because this is what happens with the people who don't. What then? If God had the will to demonstrate his wrath, and to make his power known, like he did with Pharaoh, he allowed him to remain alive to show him his power. Like he's going to allow quite a few bad people to remain alive during these last days so that he can demonstrate his power. I didn't say this. He says it. 
and he tolerates what much patient vessels of wrath made fit for destruction. Again, he tolerates what patience. Go back and read Second Peter 3, 8 and 9. He is patient because he doesn't want anyone to be destroyed. Even though they are fit for destruction, he doesn't want them to be destroyed. That's why he tolerates them with much patience. They are vessels. He says, And if this was done to make known the riches of his glory upon vessels of mercy, those who try to serve him, those who try to obey him, those who have gone to him, asked for forgiveness, and have turned around, repent, have walked away from the stupidity of their wrongs in the past. Which he, per, be, uh, no, no, which he prepared beforehand for glory. You see, he made those vessels for an honorable purpose. They just had to realize that they were made for an honorable purpose. So they were prepared beforehand for glory. Namely us. That's what Paul is talking about. Whom he called, not just from among the Jews, but also from among the nations. What of it? It is as he says in Hosea. Not Hosea. Hosea. That, see that, that asterisk mark? Hosea. That's an asterisk mark. So it's not Hosea. Hosea. Those not my people, I will call my people. And her who is not beloved, beloved. Or well, who is not loved, beloved. And in the place where it is said of them, you are not my people, they will be called sons of the living God. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is me. So people want to talk about my past. He says, you can do all the talking you want. He says, I don't have to answer to you. <laughs> and I love that. I don't love my past, no. But I do understand that I was a vessel, pay attention, made fit for destruction. But now I'm a vessel made honorable. Why? Because I do what he says. I obey him. I am the one he is calling to riches. His riches. His glory. Why? Because, and if this was done to make known the riches of his glory on vessels of mercy, which he prepared beforehand, the ones who were fit for destruction, but now they are made vessels of mercy because of his patience, because of his mercy, what does Paul say? What of it? What business is that of yours to worry about? Is what Paul is saying. You will therefore say to me, why does he yet find fault? He finds fault, ladies and gentlemen, because we all have a choice to make. Every single one of us all have a choice to make. You know what we can do? We can sit up here and give up. We can let all of the problems, we can let all of the, the, the beating up by the system we can let all of the beating up by the people. We can let all the beating up by our finances, by our situation in life. We can let all of that stuff get to us. Or we can say, you know what? He's right. God's name is Jehovah. It says it in my Bible. Jehovah's Witnesses didn't make up that name. It's in my Bible. Huh. He's right that there is a lot of gods Bible says that in the book of Corinthians that there are many gods. Am I serving the right God? Do I use his name when I talk to him? <sighs> Man, when I pray to God, do I use his name? Have I asked him, is his name important? Wait a minute, did Jesus use God's name? Hold on, wait, wait, wait. While you're asking yourself those questions, hold on. Whew, you're going too fast for me. Let's ask Jesus if he used God's name because a lot of people... They, they don't believe me because, you know, I try to tell them, and y'all don't believe me, but I'm, I'm going to go to the 17th chapter, and we're going to go 17th chapter of John. Whew, the last of the apostles, and let's see if John documents Jesus using God's name. Go to verse number, I think it's uh, 26. Let's see. And I have made your name known to them, and will make it known. Huh. You must pray then this way, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I have made your name manifest in the earth, so that the love of which you love me may be in them and I in union with them. Hmm. So Jesus made God's name known. So why are all these people refusing to use God's name when they talk to him? They all claim they pray to him. They all claim they love him. Why are they refusing? Oh, I'm sorry. You thought it was a choice. 
you can't answer that question without assuming you had a choice in it. Notice what Jesus says. And I want you guys to hear this from him, not from me. I have glorified you on the earth, having finished the work you've given me to do. So now, Father, glorify me at your side with the glory that I had alongside you before the world was. So he documents that he had a life prior to the earth. That's fine. But he also documents that he has a different glory than his father. It's all right. I understand you believe what you believe, and I'm not here to change that. I'm here to show you what the scriptures say. You see, all this time, I'm going to shut this off now. Because I, I want to see my uh, snowfall. Ladies and gentlemen, all this time, and I, I say that repeatedly because you heard me say it a second ago. All this time, I've been showing you guys everything. I've not just been talking. I've been showing you where I'm getting my information from. I've been showing you the understanding. I had one young lady email me and say, you know what? I appreciate the fact that you have shown us how to do research. Ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what I've been trying to do. Go back and watch the videos and see if I'm not trying to show you how to help yourself. And look, those of you who are the more intelligent ones, you don't hate me because I'm a Jehovah's Witness. Do you know how many people hate Jehovah's Witnesses because they're Jehovah's Witnesses? Jehovah's Witnesses ain't gave them a reason to hate, but they hate them. Thank you. I appreciate that. What? Jesus said that his followers would be hated by all the nations on account of his name and the name of his father. So thank you. I, you could not have proven the prophecy to be more fulfilled than by hating individuals you don't even know for reasons you have no clue. Yeah, I know you come up with mistakes and issues and blah, blah, blah. You come up with all kind of reasoning. Doesn't matter. Because I'll say it again. Can't do that. You can't hate. You're supposed to love your neighbor. So how in the world could you hate Jehovah's Witnesses when you claim to be a quote-unquote Christian? Shame on you. And yes, you want to be better than everybody else. Shame on you. Yes, you want to worship yourself by having birthday celebrations. Shame on you for thinking that it was possible. For thinking that you could straddle that fence and claim to worship him his way when you're doing it your way shame on you so i want to thank you guys for letting me show you who i am many of you many of you especially those of you who are jehovah's witnesses were assuming don't assume i'm a servant of the true god i've been serving the true god all of my life i've never served another god never will serve another god why because he had mercy on me no other god has ever come to my aid Eight times I should be dead. And eight times at the very last minute, I'm alive. Eight times. Oh, I'm sorry. Each of those times, he was the one who I was talking to while I am being allowed to live. I kid you not. I want to thank you guys for letting me have this conversation because I've been wanting to have this conversation for quite some time. I didn't know how many people were going to take it, and I shouldn't have been worried about that, but I was. Why? Because even though I say I don't, the truth is I care about you folks. If I, look, if I didn't care, if I didn't care, Red Fox, where have you been? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if I did not care, I would not have spent two and a half weeks researching and doing information and doing all these videos just for you guys. Look, I just did this document for mortgages, and I don't even have a mortgage. Pointing out to things that I know you people weren't aware of. Showing you that all the arguments in the past were still viable today putting documents online so you can do your own research, putting up a website. Look, ladies and gentlemen, SACOM hasn't made 
a dime in the last four weeks? But hold on, wait a minute, what do you mean? I mean exactly what I just said, because there's been no advertisement. We've not been advertising anything. I stopped all of the programs in January. Why? Because you guys don't know anybody else's SACOM. All you know is Eon. So that's my reputation, and you know that I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses. I can't let Jehovah's name be brought through the mud like that. Everybody keeps saying I'm a person of integrity. You had better believe that I am. I'm not going to bring reproach on my God's name and not carry out our word. That's why we have made it a point we're digitizing all our files. Look, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of files, and it's a lot of work, and it is not easy. So the people we're bringing in, they are doing the best they can. I do mean that. And the ones who... Many of the ones who are not here, I can't say all of the ones, many of the ones who are not here, they tried very hard to help you all. They just didn't have the patience to wait for the research to be done in the tax credits. So after this week's the video, after this week's, <laughs> after this week, the videos will focus on the tax credits. If y'all want to come along with me on that ride, I say by all means come because there ain't no place else to go. We done did everything else. We done survived, ladies and gentlemen. We have proved that we're not dead. I just gave you that information today. Nobody else has ever talked about that. Doing an EKG? Who's ever brought up something like that? Oh, I'm sorry. Whew. I apologize. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on. I got to find it. That was Jim Hill. Hey, see you later, Jim. I've never met Jim Hill. I met his sister. You know what? I, no, wait, I apologize. I can't say that I never met him. I don't know if he ever came to the school. Okay? I can't say because I don't remember. Ladies and gentlemen, this app works. I downloaded this app from uh, the Play Store. I didn't get the mod. This is the mod app. I didn't get the mod. I downloaded it from the Play Store. This is an older version. So this one won't work. It won't let you do this one. Okay, this one says February 14th. Uh-uh. This, the, when you try to use it, it says it's old. But the one from the Play Store, man, works pretty good. Literally. So I'm going to tell you, it's called uh, Wally, 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 Well, Troy, Well, Troy, Well, Troy, Well, Troy. I'm advertising it. This is how you do your EKG. From what I understand, it sends it to you in an email. You see, that's what I do. Now you don't have to go searching for anything. Is this the best app, ladies and gentlemen? I don't know. I don't know. I'm telling you this is what I'm going to use because I've already tried it. As a matter of fact, I tried it earlier and I'm going to move that out of the way, move that out of the way, move that out of the way. Well, Troy! Oh, and it's uh, when it starts up, it actually is... Uh, it actually starts up pretty well. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the wrong one. It's on my other phone. It's on the phone where we're getting the internet signal. Sorry. Yes, I have to use the phone to get the internet signal. And no, I don't want to do my lifestyle. It there there are a lot of things to this app and there are a lot of features to the app. I like it. I, I honestly I do like it. It is different. This app is unique. And it's asking about my heart rate right now. And it's, it, what it does is it asks you to put your finger on the camera. Uh, not on the camera. I mean, yeah, on the camera. Not on the, uh, the, the palm reader, but to put your finger over the camera. And to hold it there. And you have to hold it there for about a minute and a half. But it will get your heart rate for about a minute and a half. And right now I'm at 72 BPMs. Beats per minute. And it does a pretty good job. So... Well, Troy, you see what happens when you stay on to the end of the video? Because I did forget to let you guys know that I did find this app, and this app works all right. Get it from the Play Store. Don't get it from there. Go to the Play Store. Okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, now here's the thing. When it has me putting my finger, and I have my finger on it, I'm at 70 beats per minute. But when I have my finger over this, uh, the camera lens, the light comes on. So I just want you to be aware of that. It automatically turns it on because apparently the one I'm using is the one behind the phone at the backside. And so what it is is, you know, 
it's dark. You usually can't see that. So the light comes on. So I just want you to be prepared. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for letting me tell you who I am as a person. Do you, do you guys not understand when I say that these individuals have put me in jail six times for not doing anything? Well, the first time, yes. That one, I did that. I said, here I am. I did it. It was wrong. My God said it's wrong. It's wrong. And I went through what I went through. They just kept changing the terms of that agreement. I wasn't too happy with that. Uh, it says total beats 100 and 71 beats per minute was the average. That's what it's giving me now. So, And then what it does is it lets me know that it will send me the results. I haven't I haven't looked for the results yet, but I will. Okay? It even asks me how do I feel and what's going on. Uh, okay. All I can tell you is I like the app. I, I'm being honest with you. So I actually like the app. I haven't had a chance to look at the app because I've been doing all of this. But I will say to you guys, I think Well Troy is the app. But anyway, as I was saying, I want to thank you guys um, because those last five times, I did that because of you guys. I could have stopped it. I had the court order. I could have showed them, hey, no, sorry. Court says, no, I don't have to do that. Y'all are out of your minds. You need this order to say, I do have to do it, or you have no jurisdiction. That's all I had to say. But I did something wrong, and I said that I need to suffer consequences and I made myself suffer consequences however in 2016 I said enough that's why this time when they did it I kept my mouth shut why because I was relying on my God he still had some things he wanted me to work out I was working on me and that's what I told everybody I even told you guys there I had some things about myself I had to work out but in the meantime I was still gonna take care of what I needed to take care of and I did that thanks to him which he utilized some of you to help me, it turned out okay. Not finished yet, but it turned out okay. I am not bitter. I am not regretful of the time that I have had to spend doing these last couple of videos for you all. I'm actually very proud. You guys have no idea. I will get to sleep tonight, and I promise you I will sleep soundly this night. Okay, I guarantee you, when I go to sleep tonight, I will sleep soundly. Why? Because I am very proud of those documents that we put up. You know, my biggest fear was that somebody would come knocking on my door and play games with me again, and I would not be able to get that information out because I knew how powerful that information was. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know how powerful that information is, please go back and look. Complaints against judges are only misconduct complaints. You don't see any complaint out there for criminal conduct against judges, but judges are prosecuted. They do prosecute judges when the attorney general brings a criminal complaint against a judge. They do prosecute judges, but you guys haven't done it. I promise you, if you do the simple complaint, you don't have to put all the details. You just have to put enough details. So what did I do? With the help of my God, I gave you more than enough details. By the way, like I said, in a couple of months, not now, but in a couple of months, I'll be doing a video asking all of you who are rejected by the court, you won't do it now, to send that information to me so that I can help go full speed ahead, full speed ahead on your behalf. Ladies and gentlemen, I did say about the... Um, <laughs> that thing about the... 508 and all of that stuff, I said that we were doing that for the new sap packers, not the old sap packers. The old sap packers were going to have to wait. People are already emailing, asking for theirs. Please, ladies and gentlemen, please stop being so selfish. I haven't forgotten about a single one of you. To this day, I have not forgotten about my defrauded homeowners of America. That's why we're doing the tax credits. Please, stop being selfish. The God I serve doesn't like selfishness. Yes, if you celebrate birthdays, if you celebrate your birthday, you are selfish. Sorry, there's no way around that. It's 
you're worshiping yourself. You're celebrating yourself. Come on, do you not realize that? Because I do. Ladies and gentlemen, I love myself. But you talk to anybody who knows me, I don't celebrate myself. Yes, I talk the talk, but I don't walk that walk at all, ever. Why? Because as much as I love the person that I am, I cannot be better than the next man. My God won't allow me. Look, there was a time at Joe's, at the Kingdom Hall, we give talks where we stand up and we speak to the congregation and we give talks. We prepare for these talks. It's called the Theocratic Ministry School. It is a school. Okay, it teaches us how to be speakers. That's why I can have a conversation with anybody and talk about anything and keep going on and on and on and on on the subject without getting tired. And I can keep people's attention. You see, I'm not boring. Go ahead. There's no music to this video. Go ahead and see if I've been boring one single step of the way. Well, Jehovah through that organization, he has known as Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, snap! There's one more thing I need to tell y'all. Sorry, Charlies. Through that organization that he runs, he's helped me to become a better speaker. He's helped me to help people in conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, I am trying to find it. No, it's not going to be there, so I'm going to have to open up a new window. And so I apologize. But I want to show you something because, as a matter of fact, we'll go back to the rule. Okay, I want to show you guys something because I didn't know this. I've been going there. I've been showing this to people, but I did not know this. Let me show you about, and I'm not talking about this particular religion. It, sorry, it is, it's going to take us to a religion. I'm not trying to do that. I just need to show you something. T-H-E-H-O-L-Y. S E E. You guys have heard of the Holy See, right? Let's talk about the Holy See for a reason, uh, for a minute, just for a minute. Then I'm I'm finishing this video. This is the Vatican. I don't want the Vatican. I want you guys to pay attention to the Vatican's friend, because we're going to talk about the Holy See as soon as my computer catches up with me. So give it a second for us to get this section right here. I don't want, that's the one I want right here. Do you, I want you guys to pay attention. The Holy See is the universal government of the Catholic Church and operates from the Vatican city-state, a sovereign, independent territory. The Pope is the ruler. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the Pope is the ruler. Okay, this is the state.gov website. It says the same thing. The Holy See is the universal government of the Catholic Church. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on. I want y'all to pay attention. The Holy See is the universal. That means the universe. Ladies and gentlemen, that means Jupiter, Mars, Milky Way galaxy, Andromeda galaxy. The universe. The Holy See is the universal government of the Catholic Church. Really? Wait a minute, hold on. And it's a sovereign universal government. What the fly? What the? Who, Lord have mercy. Hold on. Wait a minute. Somebody brought a, a lawsuit against the Holy See? Lord have mercy. Wait, I'm interested to see that, that right there. I, I know what it's about, but... <laughs> you can't sue the Holy See. It's a sovereign nation. And again, they just told you it's a sovereign nation. It's a universal sovereign government. Okay? Hold on. <laughs> let me let you guys know. The United States is located on Earth, right? Well, the entire universe is ruled by the Pope. I did look, people. I'm not making that up. Pay attention. Doe versus the Holy See was a lawsuit involving the sovereign immunity status of the Holy See in relation to the Catholic Church sexual abuse scandal in the United States. See, that's the problem. The Holy See didn't cover that. 
that's not covered by the Holy See. Okay? They are separate from that. That's covered by their commercial wing. The sexual abuse scandal, that's the commercial wings. And I got to be quiet, okay? I got to be careful because they don't know that. They don't know that aspect of things because they've never gone at that angle. They are sovereign, but that portion, that's why they're always paying out money. That's the commercial side. That's why they can be sued, but not the Holy See, okay? The Holy See is different. It is separate from the church. It's the controlling arm, but it is not the church. You don't believe me? That's why the Pope is in charge of the Holy See. Now, I want you to hear Judge Michael Mossman, District Court Judge out of Oregon, ruled that the Holy See cannot be held liable because there is no relationship of employment in the case. I just told you. I, I haven't read this, ladies and gentlemen. I just, that's why I said I had to be careful on how I said it. But I, I promise you, I haven't read this. But what I can promise you is I understand what's going on. I understand that it's a commercial issue. That the district court would never... <sighs> Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, just want you guys to understand. Yes, yes, yes. What's being done to children on this planet is horrible. What the United States is doing to children in foreign countries and in this country, if you guys are thinking all these children who are coming up missing, are coming up missing because they don't know how to find their way home, you're out of your mind. If you think that the situation with Mr. Epstein, what they were accusing him of, if you think he's the only one, and that Bill Clinton is the only politician, you are out of your mind. So please stop thinking that. You find children coming up missing and they never find them, that's because these individuals take those children and when they wear them out in all of their little snuff films or whatever they do, they kill them. They don't get them just strung out on drugs anymore. Why? Because these children can report like Epstein's so-called because there was not a trial except for the first one where he signed a plea so where the so-called victims can identify them so they are killing them so there are no witnesses this is a very very wicked planet that we're on that's why he says he's allowing it temporarily you see, he's the God of love, so he can resurrect people. So each one of those children who have been killed as a result of these idiots, or the women or the men who have been killed as a result of these idiots, he's promised a resurrection. Okay? I trust that. I, it doesn't matter how he's going to do it, when he's going to do it. The fact is he promised that he will, and he's never, ever broken a promise. Again, let me show you something about the Holy See. The Holy See is a universal government with the Pope as its ruler. It's universal. That means it controls the United States. Hold on. No, you guys are not getting it just yet. Remember, they were trying to sue the Holy See. And the court said, no, you can't sue the Holy See. Ladies and gentlemen, you still haven't gotten it. You can't sue the Holy See because the Holy See controls the stupid courts. The United States is a world semi-sovereign. Now remember, this is an official website of the United States. Notice what it says about the United States' relation with the Holy See. I want you to know this was, this is August 27, 2020. Okay? August 27, 2020. The Secretary Blinken meets with Pope Francis. He meets Holy See Secretary of State Cardinal Parolin and the Secretary of Relations and the States, relations with the States, Archbishop Gallagher. United States and the Holy See, see, partners in addressing climate change and promoting human rights. There is no way in the world the United States can sue the Holy See. I hope you can see what I'm talking about. 
It will never happen. Pay attention. The United States relations with the Holy See. Let's find out what the United States says their relation with the Holy See is. Now, I'm not talking about a religion. I'm talking about an organization that has power. More power than some simple lawsuit with somebody calling themselves Doe will ever get any headway with. For more information about the Holy See, is available at the Holy See page and from other Department of State publications and other sources listed at the end of this fact sheet. U.S. Holy See Relations. The Holy See is a universal government. The United States is saying this. They didn't say this. The United States said this. In 1945, the Catholic Church, through its Pope, said that they were trying to establish God's kingdom on earth. Get on out of here. And it operates from Vatican City, a sovereign, independent territory. The Pope is the ruler of both Vatican City State and the Holy See. Do you not understand, ladies and gentlemen, that the Holy See and Vatican City are two separate entities? That's why the Pope is the ruler of both. The Holy See is the supreme body of government of the Catholic Church. It is a sovereign, judicial, or <laughs> juridical entity. It is an artificial entity, ladies and gentlemen, under international law. So not only are they under universal law, they are under international law. The United States and the Holy See consults, cooperates on international issues and mutual interests, including human rights. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States is letting you know they know everything that's going on. We are sitting up here and we approve of it because there's nothing we can do about it. That's what they're telling you. Now, well, hold on. Let me let you make sure you guys understand. The United States and the Holy See work together in sharing priorities such as promoting religious freedoms and combating human trafficking. Ladies and gentlemen, they're not combating human trafficking. They just don't want anybody else making money off of it. That's just the way it is. They want to control the finances. The United States maintains consular relations with the papal state from 1797 to 1870 and diplomatic relations with the Pope. In his capacity as head of the papal state, papal, papal, papal state from 1848 to 1868, though not at the ambassadorial, ambassadorial levels. Don't care about any of the rest of this. I just want you guys to understand they say that this is a universal government. That is interesting. You know who says his government is universal? Sorry, I have a... It's nighttime and the light's on and I got one of these little flying creatures and I needed to hit him and I missed him. And I got Velcro on my <laughs> keep uh, my uh, computer pad because that's where I would put my phone when I would be using the exercise bike. And my com it has a computer pad on the exercise bike. And so I put my phone there so it wouldn't fly off. All right. Anyway, well, my towel got stuck on it. And that's, what the, that's why that came up. Uh, but whatever bug that was is gone. Ladies and gentlemen, I will put this video up tomorrow. I'm going to shut everything down. This computer has been on since 8 o'clock this morning. This is what I've been doing every day for the last two weeks. From 8.30 to... It's now 9.10 in the PM. But I thought you said you got muscular dystrophy and you don't have no energy. Ladies and gentlemen, I have this thing where I go for three weeks nonstop. This is how I used to work. I used to work, uh, used to do wake up, go to sleep, wake up, go to sleep, but I, I go to work in between and then I come back home and that was it. This is my routine. Go back and watch the video some years ago. This is my routine. This is what I do. And then I will crash. My body will not let me do anything else. That's why I said I'm about to go watch my Leverage Redemption. That's what it's called. Leverage Redemption. I'm about to go watch my Leverage Redemption. Because I, the characters, I've gotten to know the characters. And they're stupid. But it's okay. Because, you know, I've gotten to know them. I That's my wind down time. Before I go to sleep. As I'll watch a couple of episodes of things like that. And I'll go to sleep. And then tomorrow... This morning I woke up right about 6. Tomorrow I'll wake up about 6, probably about 
then I'll be at this again, but tomorrow will be a little bit different than today. I will definitely be working on that document that we talked about. I probably am going to try not to share much more because that document is for our packers. Even though we're going to be providing that document for all of our packers, that document is for them. We'll give you guys some ideas from time to time. But with that being said, I do, again, want to thank you guys for allowing me to, for the first time, explain who I am and why I do what I do. I, I know you think I've done that before, but no, I haven't. All the other times was just me talking. This was something I've been wanting to do for the last couple of weeks, so I say thank you. Again, this video will be up in the morning. You all take care. I truly do hope that those complaint forms come in handy, that they actually work for some of you, because the ones of you who do them, trust me, we will be... Again, I cannot speak on your behalf as a private attorney general unless I have enough of you doing them and enough of you being turned down and them not following the rules, which means you will have to follow the rules and you will cannot augment that document. Because if you do, I will not help you. You will not be a part of the group that I'm going with. Okay? A lot of you want to add all kind of junk. Please don't do that. A lot of you want to add your ideas you see, I have shown you what the law says, or excuse me, apologize, what the statute says. I have shown you what the statute says. We're going to follow the rules because that's what the rules require. Wait, wait, wait. Got one more to show you. This is your fault. This is your fault, people. I was doing just fine. I was getting ready to go lay down and everything. Look at that. See that 21, 13, 50, 2? That's 913 in the PZM. All right. What I was going to show you is at the very beginning of the contract for, not the contract, but the uh, complaint against the, what is that stupid thing? Come on now. Y'all supposed to be helping me. The attorney, no, the banks. Sorry. I I'm tired. Okay. <laughs> The complaint against the banks, ladies and gentlemen, that right there, the issue that I'm trying to bring to you all's attention, at the very top, that very first paragraph that talks about what mortgage fraud is believed to be, well, it says at the very bottom of that paragraph that you must follow the administrative procedures and rules for filing a complaint. Well, fill out your complaint first. Then read the rules and follow the rules. Literally, follow their rules. Don't follow your rules. That's why people don't get any where. Because they are not following the rules. They're following their rules. Their own rules. And that's why it's ending up badly. Okay? That's the point that I'm trying to make. That's why it's ending badly. So I can't show it to you. Yes, I can. Uh, I think it's right here. And I can shut all that down. Okay, real quick. Pay attention. It says, and this is a quote, the clear policy advanced by the Fifth Circuit is that although plaintiffs had a responsibility to initially attempt to comply with administrative requirements, the government is also under obligation to communicate with claimants and investigate claims in good faith. This is not what I said. This is what the Fifth Circuit said. I didn't say that. So what I'm trying to get you guys to understand, you have to do what's reasonable. Follow the rules. Because if you follow the rules and they don't follow the rules, then they can be held liable. But if you go in there arguing and screaming and yelling and huffing and puffing and being stupid, then I can't help you because they can't help you. Sorry, that's what the rules say. I didn't make up this junk. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gotta go. Y'all take care, okay? Stay safe. Look. Things are about to get really bad, so prepare yourself for it. If you haven't stocked up, 
start stocking up on food. All right, I've been stocking up, and I, look, I already don't have to go into town for a whole month. So I have enough food to get me through a couple of months with no problem, but I'm about to go get me a couple of more months worth of food so that I don't have to keep making these trips. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I wish all of you the best. Take care of yourselves. Again, thank you for letting me have this conversation with you.